Here's another problem on loci of equations in the complex plane. I want to consider the locus L of the equation, argument z minus 2 equals argument z plus 2 plus pi thirds in the complex plane. We're given L is a subset of a circle. Problem, find its center and its radius. Now, at a glance, Okay, we take a look at our equation. This doesn't look like something very familiar. So, I'm not gonna try to find clever relations between either side. I'm just gonna try to brute force out the picture. And then once I do that, we'll have access to special triangles to get to our circle. So, how do we proceed? Well, I don't know anything special about this equation, so I'm just gonna pick a Z the complex plane and draw the picture. So I'll pick a z anywhere. Then I note I need z plus 2 and z minus 2. For z plus 2, we're adding 2 to the real part of z. So that means I would start at z and then go to the right by 2. So we wind up here. Likewise, for z minus 2, we go to the left by 2. Now, I'll connect the dots. Then we want to consider what's happening when we talk about arguments. Now, the argument of a complex number, we're just going to measure the angle counterclockwise from the positive real axis to our point. We want that angle between 0 and 2 pi. So, for argument of z plus 2, we're talking about this angle right here. For argument of z minus 2, we're talking about this angle here. So, this relation says that for this triangle, the angle at the origin is going to be equal to pi over 3. Now, with the picture drawn like this, we have to do some work to make something out of that. But we're given that we have a circle. So what I'm going to do is, is just consider the two extreme cases in the middle. That'll give us three points. With those three points, we can get the equation of our circle. Now, if we start with the middle, I'm going to put z on the imaginary axis. So that's going to mean the imaginary axis bisects our triangle. We're going to have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The top leg is going to be equal to 2, since this distance is 4. Now, the recipe for going from the short leg to the other sides on a 30, 60, 90 triangle. To go to the hypotenuse, we multiply by 2. To go to the long leg, we multiply by square root of 3. So that means our z here, okay, the real part 0, imaginary parts 2 square root of 3. So we get 2 square root of 3i for our first point. For the extremes, what we're going to do is, I'll put, for instance, z minus 2 on the imaginary axis, so our picture looks like this. Okay, note we have pi thirds at this angle. So again, we're going to have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This top leg, okay, we're going to have length 4, and that's going to be the long leg. So to go from the long leg to the short leg, we divide by square root of 3. Then we're going to multiply by 2 to get to the hypotenuse. So Note, when I record z, the real part's not going to be equal to 4. It's going to be half of that since we have the midpoint. So we're going to get 2 plus 4 squared to 3 over 3 times i. And note, for that, I'm just going to multiply by square root of 3 over 3 to get the 4 squared to 3 over 3. Now, if we go to the other extreme with the triangle pointed this way, same answer, except we're going to change the real part with a negative. So we'll also have minus 2 plus 4 squared of 3 over 3 times i. So we have three points now. Now, we draw our picture. So we take our three points, we plot them, and then we fit a circle to our points. If we've drawn our picture well, then the center is going to be above the real axis. We don't need that for the solution, but it's a good check for our work. Now, for the picture, we note our circle is symmetric about the imaginary axis, which means the center is on the imaginary axis. So in terms of the xy plane, 
center is going to be 0 comma y0. We'll call our radius capital R. Now, we get equations by just measuring the distance from our points to the center. For an easy one, I'll take the distance from B to the center. So they're both on the imaginary axis. So R is equal to 2 squared of 3 minus y0. Now, this doesn't depend on whether we're above or below the real axis. So let's just check that. If we're above the real axis, then our picture looks like this. It's clear that r is equal to 2 squared of 3 minus y0. So we just drop the i's. If y is negative, then our center is below the real axis. And r is just going to be the distance from 0 to 2 squared of 3i plus the distance from 0 to y0i. Now, y0 is a negative number, so if I want to remove the sign, I multiply by minus 1. So this distance is minus y0, this distance is 2 squared of 3, and we get for r, 2 squared of 3 minus y0. So that checks out, so it doesn't matter. For our second equation, we take distance from either A or C to our center, we get this equation here. Now note, if I didn't exploit the symmetry, we would have three equations, and we worked out what happens with equations two and three, we would get that our center lives on the imaginary axis. So this observation just saves us a little work. Now, we take equation one, square both sides, Equation two, we're just going to expand out. Then we're going to take the difference. So we'll eliminate the r squareds and the y zero squareds. Okay, so there's equation one, equation two, we take the difference. Then we get that y zero is equal to two over square root of three. Now, to put this back in the complex form, okay, the real part zero, to get the imaginary part, I'm going to take this and multiply by i. So we have that our center is equal to 2 square root of 3 over 3 times i. Here I'm just multiplying by square root of 3 over 3 to clear out the denominator. We go back to equation 1. Then I have that r is equal to 2 square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 3 over 3, which gives me r equals 4 square root of 3 over 3. So that answers our question. We have our center and we have our radius. Now, the low side is just part of the circle, but the equation for the whole circle is given as follows. Okay, so note, using complex numbers, the equation of a circle is given as the modulus of z minus z0, the center, equal to the radius. So the equation for this circle is z minus 2 square root of 3 over 3 times i. We take the modulus, set it equal to 4 square root of 3 over 3. Now, we check our answer, so we're going to take our three points, put them into the original equation, then we'll take those three points, put them into the equation for the circle. Now, if I take z equal to minus 2 plus 4 square root of 3 over 3i, put it in here, I get this equation here. For this term, we have a point on the imaginary axis, positive imaginary part, so the argument's going to be pi halves. For this term, we're going to plot our point in the plane. It's going to be in the second quadrant. And what we'll do is we'll break our argument up into two angles. So we'll have pi halves from the first quadrant. Then I want to find this angle here. So we label our edges, our legs. Then we get cosine and sine for pi over 3. So I have pi thirds plus pi halves equals pi halves plus pi thirds. That checks out. For z equal to 2 squared of 3i, same idea, put it into the equation. On this side, we plot our point in a complex plane, break it up into two angles. So we're going to have pi halves plus this angle here, which when we work out the cosine and sine, we get pi over 6. Over here, I have a point in the first quadrant, so we work out the angle as usual. We get pi thirds, and then we add pi thirds. So if pi over 6 plus pi over 2 equals pi thirds plus pi thirds, that checks out. I'll leave the third point to you. 
Now for the circle, for the points on the edges of the loci, I can just put them into the equation together. When I do that, I'm trying to take the modulus of this complex number here, which is going to be square root of 4 plus 4 square root of 3, or 4 square root of 3 over 3, which is our radius. So that checks out. 4 is equal to 2 squared to 3i. Okay, here we're just going to take modulus of a point on the imaginary axis. So we just drop the i, and again we get our radius. So again, that checks out.